Google DeepMind is releasing Gemini 3 Flash today, and this is their biggest update yet. You get pro-level performance at the cost and latency of a Flash model, which is pretty impressive. They gave me early access, and I would say this is probably one of the most impressive Flash releases yet. Because historically speaking, the Flash models were supposed to be these low latency, high throughput, and low cost models, but they were never as smart and intelligent as a pro. Now this is about to change with the release of Gemini 3 Flash, especially when it comes to coding and reasoning tasks. On coding, it surpasses Gemini 3 Pro on Sui Bench Verified. In this video, I'm going to show you what this means for the ecosystem. We're going to look at some examples and then later on, I'll show you how you can start using this model in the API. The model is currently available in preview in AI Studio. And the model string is Gemini 3 Flash Preview. Apart from AI Studio and Vortex, the model is going to be available in Google Anti-Gravity, as well as their Gemini CLI. For multimodal inputs, you can define the media resolution, low, medium, high. This is going to have an impact on the number of tokens and also on the accuracy of responses. Now, it supports different thinking levels, but they did something different. This time, you have minimal, low, medium, and high. It uses something called dynamic thinking. When you set it to a certain level, the model is going to decide how much thinking budget it needs to allocate to a certain query. If you want no reasoning, set it to minimal. In certain cases, the model will decide to think. It supports the same number of output tokens as the previous generation, and uh, the context window is still 1 million tokens. We're going to look at benchmarks and pricing before we look at some really interesting examples and comparison. These are the benchmarks that I have available and confirmed at the time of recording of this video. There will be some additional benchmarks released with the official announcement. The first thing you notice is that Gemini 3 Flash beats the recently released Gemini 3 Pro on Sui Bench Verified. You're going to see a very consistent theme. And I would argue that this is the specialized coding model that you could expect from the Google DeepMind team. But more importantly, it beats the previous generation of Pro by a huge margin on this specific benchmark. Keep in mind, back in March, Gemini 2.5 Pro was state of the art. Now, the other two benchmarks that I have access to is GBQA Diamond and Humanities Last Exam. So GBQA Diamond tests the scientific and reasoning capabilities of the models. Again, this is very close to Gemini 3 Pro and beats Gemini 2.5 Pro. So you get a lot smarter model at a lower latency and a much better price point. Even on humanity's last exam, it's close to Gemini 3 Pro and beats some models like Sonnet 4 4.5, GPT 5.1. Based on my own testing for coding tasks, if you use Gemini 3 Pro for planning, then Gemini 3 Flash can be a really good replacement for well-defined tasks. Now, this also comes with a price increase. Gemini 2.5 Flash without caching is 30 cents per million input token. Now that has been increased to 50 cents. However, the increase on the output tokens is relatively small. But still, you're getting a much better model compared to 2.5 Pro and essentially very close to the performance of Gemini 3 Pro on coding at a fraction of the cost of these models. And still, Google is offering this at a, a relatively lower cost compared to some of the other competitors. And that's possible because Google controls the full stack of their machine learning training and inference. So next, I'm going to show you some really interesting examples and in comparison with 2.5 Pro and Gemini 3 Pro. And we're going to see whether you could actually use it as a replacement model or not. To give you a sense of how significant this release is, I'm comparing this model directly with Gemini 2.5 Pro, which was GA in June. So in almost five months, this model has made significant improvements. So we're running the same prompt. The 2.5 Pro is still thinking and Gemini 3 Flash has already started generating the code. Now it took a total of 22 seconds for it to process this prompt. On the other hand, 
Gemini 2.5 Pro took about 37 seconds. This prompt not only tried to test the coding capabilities, but also spatial awareness of the model. Now here's the output from Gemini 2.5 Pro. You can see it completely missed on the TV. It only created the sofa. Now I ran this a couple of times and Gemini 2.5 Pro does have trouble with this specific prompt. Now here's the output from Gemini 3 Flash, which actually shows Tom and Jerry on the TV screen. So it not only shows the spatial awareness, but also the word knowledge of this model. I ran the same prompt with Gemini 3 Pro, which took about 48 seconds. For comparison, here's the output from Gemini 3 Pro, which is aesthetically a lot more pleasing. However, the good news is that you can achieve similar effects with a little bit of prompting from Gemini 3 Flash as well. Seems like DeepMind used the same training recipe and data for both Gemini 3 Pro and Flash. And it shows up in the UIs and websites that it creates. So here's a website created by Gemini Flash. It's extremely well designed. It doesn't look like yet another AI slob. However, there is a trick to creating websites like this. And it all comes down to prompting. So for example, if you ask Gemini 3 Flash, a prompt like uh, create me a minimalist and modern landing page for a SaaS website. Here is what it created. Uh, it's very similar to what you would expect from any AI. But to achieve something like this, you will need to change your strategy of how you prompt these systems. Now that website is based on this or a reimagination of this website, which is my own website for a speech transcription system. In this case, I used the URL context tool and asked it to access that website and then tell me how a billion dollar design company will reimagine it. So here is a very detailed analysis based on its recommendation. And then I asked it to reimagine it based on the design philosophy that it suggested. And as a result, we have very clean and modern looking UI. So prompting these systems still matter a lot. And some of the same prompts through Gemini 3 Flash and Pro. And the results are actually pretty encouraging. So for this specific prompt, Gemini Flash took about 40 seconds. On the other hand, Gemini 3 Pro took almost 90 seconds. Here's the output that we get from Gemini 3 Flash. It actually follows prompt and instructions very closely. Also, the animations are really good. And uh, I asked it to create a video sequence. So you can actually see that it goes back in time as well. And everything is to scale. Now, here is uh, an output from Gemini 3 Pro. And it takes the animations and visual components to a whole different level. It's a lot more detailed. It looks like it was designed by a really high quality designer. Uh, and this is expected because Gemini 3 Pro is a lot better model. However, with a little bit of prompting, you can guide Gemini 3 Flash to achieve really good results, especially for well-defined tasks. Here's another direct comparison between the two models based on a prompt that I took from the Gemini 3 Pro release. Gemini 3 Flash produced about 5,000 tokens whereas a Gemini 3 Pro is on a higher end of about 8,000 tokens. Now, here's the output from the Gemini 3 Flash, which does not look bad at all. On the other hand, here's the output from Gemini 3 Pro, which is definitely a lot more aesthetically pleasing. However, you're getting a very similar result at a fraction of the cost. So again, for well-defined tasks, it might be worth using Gemini 3 Pro for planning and then of the Flash version for implementation. It's also really good at creating SVGs. So for example, create an animated SVG of the SpongeBob character, put everything in a single file, the user should be able to control the hand movements and make it dance. So this is the output. You can actually control the movements which is pretty nice because it's a single SVG. During my early testing of Gemini 3 Pro, one of the things that really impressed me was its spatial 
understanding capabilities and reasoning. Uh, one of the first wow moments for me was when I asked her to arrange a seemingly random group of people into a specific word order in a form of a sentence. And it was the first model that was able to uh, do it consistently. And now it seems the flash is also very similar when it comes to spatial understanding. So I asked it to arrange a group of people into a sentence, hello world, I am Gemini. And here's the final output that it produced, which is really, really good. And it's one of the only two models that I have tested so far, which can do this consistently. I also realized that it's using Google colors, although I did not ask it specifically to use this color combination. So it's a pretty neat touch. Here is a simulated version of macOS in a single HTML file. Again, the aesthetics are very pleasing. That shows that it shares its DNA with Gemini 3 Pro. Now, some of these things work and others don't. So, for example, you can open the Finder, but you can't switch between the folders. I think we can fix that with proper prompting. There's a Wikipedia page that's open, although I don't think you can go to another website in here. It also created a terminal for us. Now, if I type ls, it shows me some simulated data, but I don't think all the commands are working. There's a working calculator. We can do addition here, which is neat. Uh, uh, again, overall, uh, the design is pretty nice. Uh, you can actually sketch things. And here we have, this is a test. It's a fully functional text editor as well. So pretty neat. And you can also, I think, change the background as well. So it does have some really neat and good coding capabilities. It's a very smart model, but it still has trouble with modified river crossing puzzle. In this case, we are only interested in taking or transporting the goat to the other side of the river. Now, it starts off by treating this as a classic river crossing puzzle. However, it's actually smart enough that it thinks about what the question is asking. And it realizes that the question is emphasizing on the goat's well-being, but misses the point that we just only want to take that across. So it comes up with a seven step process, which is further refined into five steps. And essentially you take everything across to the other side. Now, that being said, it's probably one of the only models that have come closer to the actual answer. So this is really encouraging. Now it doesn't have any problem with something like the modified trolley problem, where we have five dead people on the track instead of five living people. So it correctly identifies that you don't want to pull the lever because those five people are already dead. So it seems like there are certain instances in which it suffers from misguided attention, but overall it's a pretty smart model. On the API, you can use this as a drop-in replacement for the other models. So the model string that you want to use is Gemini 3 Flash Preview. It's not a GA model. There still could be some more updates to the model. And with the previous iterations of the Gemini models, we have seen that Google has been updating them pretty regularly. You can use tools or function calling. So you're going to provide a list of tools. In this case, we're just looking at a Google search. Then there is settings for thinking or reasoning effort. It currently supports four different reasoning efforts or reasoning levels. The smallest being minimal. If you set it to minimal, in most cases, it's probably not going to use any reasoning, but there is no guarantee. So if you're building applications on top of the API, you want to make sure that even though if you're setting reasoning to minimal, you still have a code logic that is going to take care of the reasoning tokens that it generates. I put a link to this very detailed notebook from Google, which goes into how to think about reasoning models and how to use them through the API. Just keep one thing in mind, you can't totally disable thinking with the Gemini 3 version. The model is going to decide how much thinking a budget to use and that is dynamically selected. The rest of the API parameters that are applicable to Gemini 3 Pro are also applicable to Gemini 3 Flash as well. 
So how exactly do you use this Gemini 3 flash model? I would use it as a workhorse model in combination with Gemini 3 Pro, where you use a bigger model like Gemini 3 Pro for planning, designing, and orchestration. And then for well-defined feature implementation, you can use something like Gemini 3 Flash, which is going to be a lot faster and a lot more cost-effective. And I think we're going to be seeing this design pattern more and more because speed does matter. You cannot be waiting forever for these models to finish execution and implementation. But the good thing is that Gemini 3 Flash is not only faster and cheaper, but it's also very capable. It's like Haiku 4.5 on the level of Opus 4.5. Anyways, do let me know how your experience with this new model is and what you will use it for. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and as always, see you in the next one.